Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your morning coffee. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Monday, December 3rd, 2018. I hope you guys had a really great weekend. Uh, I had a fun one myself. I did have a baby shower to go to last night, so that did take up most of my day. So I wasn't able to get to the Twin Flame reading for the week, but that's okay. I think we'll... I think we'll be okay without it. <laughs> but we have all kinds of different readings to, to, to look over. I did release the monthly zodiacs on Saturday. And then now we've got this one coming through. Sorry. I just realized I was I wasn't wearing my onyx. <laughs> anyway, so general energy reading for Monday, November, no, I'm sorry, December 3rd, 2018. This is not sign specific. This is not love or career specific. This is just whatever spirit wants to talk about today. All right. So um, energies are fluid. So keep in mind, guys, that, you know, this could happen. This could be something that's past. This could be something that's coming up. This doesn't even have to resonate with you at all. OK, this is a general reading. So take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Please do not try to make anything fit. Yes, if it doesn't fit, if it doesn't fit your circumstances, then don't worry about it. It's probably not a message for you, okay? Excellent. Cool. So, let's do it. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for Monday, December 3rd, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. So let's give this a few shuffles and see what we've got for today. December 3rd, 2018. December 3rd, 2018. One more shuffle. All right, let's see what we've got for today. There we go. All right, Knight of Wands so far. Okay. We've got the Knight of Wands here. This is Sagittarian energy. We've got the Five of Wands, the Good Lord, the Page of Swords, the Three of Swords, and Shadow Work. All right. Underneath the deck is the Six of Pentacles. All right. So the overall theme here. Is balance between give and take. Um, this could be fine now. The, this some of you could be working on improving your finances. You could be. Um, some of you may really be. If we're talking business wise, some of you may really be trying to move forward in your life. You have the Three of Swords here, uh, which to me is talking about heartbreak, betrayal, deception, lies, cheating, backstabbing, that kind of thing. Um, but with this Three of Swords, this just, it I mean, it, this could be really, it really could be anything. This could be family. This could be friendships. It could be a business. It could be a romantic partnership. But it's just, it just feels like an energy of someone was just was not treated fairly. Um was maybe even overlooked is what I just heard. Um, but I'm getting it's I'm getting a sense of uh, like some sort of defenses have been put up. I really feel like this is an energy that's passed already. Whatever the three of swords represents happened already. It's not like and, and it's not like it just happened. I mean it this happened for some of you, this happened over a period of time. Um, 
or it just happened a while ago. So it's not anything new. It's something that's already been known of, you know, in your existence, in your life. But what I'm, th what I'm, th because what I'm getting here is that there's an energy of someone wanting to come forward, maybe to apologize, maybe to reconcile. We have the Knight of Wands. But this is an unstable energy. And it's almost as if this person that wants to come forward and reconcile in a way, it's like, why would you want to reconcile with this kind of energy when they're just going to be gone as quickly as they came back in? It's like, and so that's where this Five of Wands energy is coming from. This conflict, this inner conflict, inner struggle, a differing of opinion, probably an inner internal ego battle. It's, it's almost as if somebody is aware of the fact that why would they even want to reconcile or reconnect, uh, be friends again or whatever when the energy is unstable to begin with, with the Knight of Wands. And so as a result, we have someone that could be watching, spying, but learning. And if they're watching, I'm getting an I'm getting an energy of they're watching in order to learn what the best way they could come forward could be, how they could have this reconciliation. Now, I I, I do want to say that the Knight of Wands energy is not all bad. Okay, it doesn't. It, I mean, it, yeah, it's kind of unstable, but at the same time, this is also speaking about someone that's just fiery and very passionate about wanting to move forward, about wanting to reconcile, potentially. Now, this energy doesn't have to be the person um, that would need, or would want to come forward and maybe reconcile. This could also be your energy. So if you are the person that um, was hurt with this Three of Swords energy, if you were on the receiving end of that hurt, you could be battling yourself with how to move forward. You could be coming to terms with the fact that the situation is not balanced um, uh, in give and take. It, the reciprocity just is not there. And it's probably not going to be there. And I really feel like some of you, for some of you, it's taking some time for you to come to this conclusion. Almost because you don't necessarily want to believe it. Um, and so here again, we have the Five of Wands energy of conflict, chaos, struggle, uh, differing of opinions, maybe your head fighting your mind versus your heart, you know, versus your ego. <laughs> and so with the Page of Swords here, there's an energy of, for some of you that are resonating in this way, there's an energy of you trying to find every bit of detail that you can to come to some sort of conclusion for some of you. Okay, so then underneath all of that, we have shadow work. And this is one of a few unique, I think there are like three or four unique cards in this deck. This is the Moon Child Tarot. Um, and actually, I have not pulled this card yet, so I'm excited to see what it means. But, you know, off the top of my head, just channeling wise, there is definitely a lot of shadow work that's happening here. Especially for those, well, for those of you that are on the receiving end of whatever this Three of Swords energy is, I feel like you've been doing this shadow work for some time, even though you may not necessarily be consciously aware of that fact. And that's purely by virtue of the fact that you are, you've been dealing with some sort of betrayal here or something that like is heartbreaking, some sort of heartbreaking circumstances. Um, so you've been doing that shadow work for some time. Now, for those of the, for those that are represented by the Knight of Wands here, the the energies that are like wanting to come in to rush back in to reconcile to, and reconcile could be anything. It could be trying to get back together if this is a romantic relationship, trying to rekindle a friendship if this is just a friend. Um, some, whatever, however that resonates for you, they are in the process. This, these the, the 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 individuals that are represented as the, uh, or that resonate as the Knight of Wands energy. 
they are in the process of going through some sort of shadow work and they would need to they would need to clear up all of this stuff that caused this three of swords energy on their on their end right but let's see what the book says about this it's like you're facing your inner demons you are maybe even going through somewhat of a dark night of the soul shadow work A mystic rests in quiet contemplation beneath the light of the full moon, infusing its ancient wisdom within her own unique vibration. Here she works her inner spark through the transmutation and gleaning of her shadow, an important facet of her being which exists in balance with her light. Uh, inquiries. What deeper habits are you ready for? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what deeper habits are habits are ready for my awareness? Where is my shadow presenting itself the most? Within each of us is a shadow self, a multifaceted inner vessel of the pains, traumas, fears, and suppressions we have experienced throughout our life. Very often we think the shadow is so, we think the shadow as something negative or malevolent, as the world itself conjures up themes of darkness or, or fear. But if we look a bit closer, we may find that our shadows are the ultimate liberators, acting as the most profound catalysts for aligning with our truth. Like the dark matter of the universe and the great cosmic womb, dreams and seeds of light may be cultivated there, and healing and creation may be birthed through cycles and doorways of revolutionary change. Our shadows can help anchor our own brilliance and self-worth in teaching us to rise and transmute from the ashes that divide us from within. This may happen when we release our hidden burdens or remove the masks of personas we continuously hide behind, allowing us to dive deeper within the waters of our heart. The obscure aspects of our shadow also show us where our thoughts or habits have become entrenched or addictive over time which is helpful when looking at how and where we may need to make some profound changes in our life. So that really goes hand in hand, to be honest. Um, you know, there could have been a situation in which somebody was wearing a mask, you know, and wasn't being completely honest, and that could have... And that could have um, created this Three of Swords situation this heartbreak, betrayal, backstabbing, whatever, however that resonates. And so now someone, in order for someone to, I mean, we're not getting an official card of reconciliation, but to be honest, that's what the Knight of Wands feels like right now. And it's not even, and, and, and it's, but it's still an unstable energy. There's still a lot of ego, e egocentrism, um, pride, vanity in the energy that I'm feeling from the Knight of Wands. And so I really feel like whoever is represented by this person is aware of the fact that they cannot come forward with that kind of energy any longer, which is putting them in this Five of Wands state, this like confusion, differing of opinion. How do I even approach this? Do I even want to approach this anymore? What do I need to approach that? You see that kind of energy. And yet, with all that said, there's energies of being watched. The Page of Swords. The Page of Swords is like the spy. It's also very inquisitive energy. So this is some. This is an individual that goes out and, and, and watches for information. But it's but it's like all they can do is stand on the outskirts and watch because of this. Three of Swords, and because of the Six of Pentacles, because they're aware that someone is not going to is not going to reciprocate unless they decide, unless the other party is 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 reciprocating, is giving in a beneficial way. I don't just mean like you know, in a narcissistic oh whatever. I'm I'm gracing you with my time, so blah blah. No, absolutely not. No way. No way. No way. You actually have to give something of value to the situation in order for this to work again. Is basically what's being said. 
But ultimately, that's a good thing because it's influencing someone to face their shadow. It's not even it's not even like they're influencing them. It's forcing them to. It's an energy of you in order to understand this you are now faced with a situation where you have to face your inner shadow. In order for you to understand what you would need to do to come back around and be accepted to 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 make some sort of gesture and be and it be accepted, then you have to face your shadow and clean up some of the darkness or clean up some of the darker corners, right? Okay, so let's do some clarification here. I want to start with the Page of Swords. Start with the Page of Swords, please, Spirit. Thank you so much. Please clarify the Page of Swords. So, please, oh, okay. Ooh. Yeah, see? Mm hmm. I told you. Wow. Underneath the deck is the Ace of Cups. Wow. This is really interesting. This is really interesting. And now I'm getting um I'm getting a different scenario now. Um but I mean I told I because I I was saying there was there are energies even though we didn't necessarily have the official cards. There are energies of someone wanting to reconcile. Something want someone wanting to make some sort of gesture, some sort of offer. <laughs> And the two cards that flipped out face up are the Knight of Pentacles and the Knight of Cups. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, someone has some sort of love to give or or, or to offer. Now, the, the, there's another situation, there's another scenario that's coming to mind now. We're going to look at these two cards in a second. But there is another scenario that's coming to mind now. Um, there is an energy of someone wanting to come forward, yes, and they are conflicted about it, yes, but the Three of Swords could be something from their past. This could be someone that's coming out of some sort of relationship, um, maybe in which the situation was balanced between give and take. Maybe someone, one person was giving too much, the other person not enough, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> this also could be this person knows that you know, again, that you're not going to really accept anything from them if the situation isn't balanced. If there isn't an... an uh, if there isn't an equal balance between... an equal exchange between give and take, okay? Now, with this Ace of Cups here, this could go to one of two ways. It could be you have this full eight, this full Ace of Cups, and so that's helping attract this person to you, or they have come to this situation, this Ace of Cups, this love, this you know self love, and now they're ready to come forward to you. You and also you could be dealing with two different people. Could be dealing with multiple different people, but I'm seeing at least for some of you, you could be dealing with two different people. One could be an earth sign, one could be a water sign. And I would say both have their sights on you. Now, it doesn't have to be any sort of specific sign, but it's possible. And then we have two more cards here. Wowie, wow, wow. Well, would you look at that? We've got the Ace of Wands and we've got the Nine of Swords in reverse. Huh. So someone's someone's really sprung on someone else, or someone has is really inspired by something. Okay, you got the pay, you have the Knight of Wands energy, and now you have the Ace of Wands energy. And with the Nine of Swords, the Nine of Swords being in reverse, it's like someone has finally let go of 
always just thinking about worst case scenarios. But there is a level of needing to upgrade your existence in order for, or well, this person that wants to come forward, there is a level of needing to upgrade their vibration, their existence, whatnot, in order to come forward and make some sort of gesture or make some sort of offer that is accepted. That it's almost like they realize that they need, even if it's not completely conscious, on some level, they realize that they need to raise their vibration in order for this to be successful. Ace of Cups, Ace of Wands. Somebody has love to give. Okay. Let's see what's going on with this Five of Wands here. Please, Spirit. The unknown. Very interesting. And underneath the deck is the Five of Pentacles. Okay. Underneath the deck, we have the Five of Pentacles here. All right. So someone's been ghosted. Now, it could be you, the person that this individual is wanting to reconnect with. At some point, they could have ghosted you. And now you may have ghosted them in return. But the, the conflict here in the Five of Wands is someone feeling inadequate with the Page of Pentacles. All right, this is, their, this is the inner conflict that's happening. And it's funny because for some of them, for some of these people that I'm channeling for here, the reason, the reason why they may have ghosted you, made you feel like you were left out in the cold or whatever, was because of these feelings of inadequacy, inadequacy with the Page of Pentacles. But the unknown is saying here that there needs this situation needs to be approached with more of an open mind. And that's on the behalf of whoever is doing the watching here, whoever is wanting to come forward. They need to open their minds up a little bit and really do their own shadow work to get out of this mindset of lack. This person feels like they don't have enough, that they are not enough, that they they believe on to a certain extent that they will not be enough. Five of Pentacles is not just being ghosted, it's also an energies of feeling lack, feeling impoverished, not feeling like you're good enough, like you'll ever be good enough, that kind of thing. And then with the Page of Pentacles here, it's like they just don't feel like they can match up. Now, that could just be because in the past, that is who they, this is who they expressed themselves as. This is how they showed up. But now, that's not really who they are anymore because they are showing up here as either the Knight of Pentacles or the Knight of Cups or both. So this is... Basically, this is the shadow work that these, this person is doing here with the Page of Pentacles, the Unknown, and the Five of Pentacles. And also, what's needing to, what they're needing to understand is that, um, you know, they're not necessarily going to have all the answers. They need to just keep an open mind and go with the flow and continue to move forward towards what they truly desire. Okay, so let's talk about the Three of Swords then. Spirit, well, thank you so much, Spirit. Please clarify this Three of Swords energy. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. The Three of Swords and the Four of Cups. Wow, underneath the deck is the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Ace and underneath the Ace of 
Pentacles is the Three of Wands. But I'm going to pull one more time because, yeah, I'm just going to pull one more time. Just see what we get. Just a little bit more clarification. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And now we have the Three of Pentacles underneath the deck here. So, okay. Thank you so much, Spirit. So... This is so crazy. So we've got the three of... So we're clarifying the three of swords right now. Yes? Yes. We've got the three of swords. <laughs> clarifying the three of swords with the four of cups. Now, this heartbreak, this betrayal happened when someone didn't follow through, basically. Um, and I'm seeing that in... In this situation, they didn't follow through because they were more focused on themselves. Which, in essence, is not a bad thing. Especially if this person has coming is just now coming out or is just coming out of, you know, a heartbreak, a breakup. They just, they just left in one situation. They may not necessarily be ready for another. Okay, that's fine. But in some way, that was heartbreaking. And that's that could be because maybe this person led you on. And made you think, made you believe, led you to believe that whatever they were, that what happened in the past was done and over with. But apparently it quite wasn't quite what they said. They weren't quite ready to move on to something new. Um, and so with the Six of Pentacles here, someone came to understand Quickly, I want to say that this situation was not reciprocal. It was not balanced. And here we have the Two of Pentacles and the Ten of Wands both in reverse. So, and then all, and then that comes out with the Queen of Swords. So, there was definitely an energy of cutting something out. Not wanting to juggle. Not wanting to be juggled. Not wanting to um, take on any more burdens not willing to really put forth any effort into balancing. And so something was cut out with the Queen of Swords. And I really feel like this could be that person that was going through the heartbreak that kind of maybe led you on, this person that now wants to come back. They could have been cutting things out with the Queen of Swords, cutting out the burdens, cutting out the juggling, the back and forth. That's the end. That could be the energy that they were coming out of in a previous relationship. Or just in that moment that they were in, they were not willing to balance and they didn't want to take any on any take on any sort of extra baggage. I feel like they were already in a period of balancing out from releasing some sort of burdens. And then you have the Ace of Pentacles here. So we've got the Ace of Cups, which came out underneath the deck, <laughs> clarifying the Page of Swords, along with the Ace of Wands, and now the Ace of Pentacles. And so the Ace of Pentacles is talking about a brand new start, a new offer. This could be a new financial situation, a new job, or potentially a new beginning in a commitment sort of energy once these this heartbreak break is cleared up once this shadow work is done it's a brand new start i don't know what that start's going to be it could definitely well it could very well be in love it very well could be you, i mean you do have the knight of cups the ace of cups did come out you got the ace of wands but someone is moving pretty slowly or you could be dealing with two different people. Three of Pentacles is about self-mastery. And that leads you to this shadow work energy here. Someone really needs to step up their energetic game in order to rekindle this relationship. Let's just get some clarification on shadow work then. Please, spirit. King of Swords. Wow. Oh boy. That's a lot. But it is shadow work, so we're going to take it. We've got the star. Healing. 
Reconnecting to your dreams. We've got the world. We've got the tower. We've got the queen of pentacles. We've got the devil. We've got the empress. We've got judgment. We've got the king, the, I'm sorry, the knight of wands again, and the king of swords. Very interesting. So there is a big major cycle that's coming to an end with the world here. And this is all ha this all has to do with the shadow work that this person is doing. Um, we've got the king and the queen of swords. Now, what I'm getting here is the queen of swords could be the person, I did say it might have been the person that was um, non-reciprocal, that kind of created the heartbreaking situation, maybe led you on only to, for you to come to find out that they weren't quite ready to move on to a new relationship or something. Could be that. But also it could be the person that basically got their heart broken here. Um, that was on the receiving end of the Three of Swords energy. And so they cut that person, the, the situation out. They said, no, I'm not dealing with this. And so now... That's influencing someone, the other person who was on the giving end of the Three of Swords energy. Now they're in the King of Swords energy. And I'm hearing some of them are asking, what do I need to do to fix this? Well, then that takes you to shadow work. You have the world and the tower. So I really feel like whoever made the moves as the Queen of Swords really influenced the tower moment here and is influencing an ending to something, okay? So we have the Queen of Pentacles and the Empress. And of, even though the Empress is the Queen of all Queens, to me, the motherly energy uh, resembles, of the Empress resembles that of the Queen of Pentacles. And actually, this has been a, um, a, a common theme. I mean, it was a theme throughout the week last week with the Queen of Pentacles, maybe even the week before. Uh, but the, the divine feminine is on the rise, yes. But there is an energy of, there's some sort of toxic energy between someone and a maternal figure. Maybe the mother, or maybe just women in general. Feminine energies in general. We have the devil here. And so this is what I'm picking up on, is this is leading to narcissistic, abusive type behaviors or at least has has led to this in the past, which has all ended up leading to the situation that you find yourselves in right now. The situation in which someone wants to reconcile over. Because now we have judgment, and again, the Knight of Wands. And I do see the Knight of Wands as a spiritual warrior type en energy, and that's kind of what I'm getting now. After all this clarification, after seeing the energies, you know, come out in this way, I do see this person as wanting to step up as some sort of spiritual warrior. This is someone that vibrates on a very high vibratory rate as the Knight of Wands, okay? Um, which makes them somewhat wishy-washy, somewhat unstable. You know, they're here, there, they're everywhere, but that really could be just because they're vibrating, they're vibrating so high that, you know, they're zip zapping through different <laughs> situations, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. But what I'm seeing here is now between with judgment and the Knight of Wands, this is someone that is raising their vibration that is um, really passionate about passionate about saying I'm sorry in some way, making it up to you, them, whatever, um, being a better version of themselves than they were in the past. But it's appearing as the Knight of Wands because I really feel like someone is very gung-ho about it at this point. It's almost as if, it's almost as if they're having a really serious breakthrough. Like they're starting to understand things on a much different level, whoever I'm talking about. This could be you. I mean, this doesn't have to be someone external from you. This could be, this is a general reading. So this could be you or this could be someone else. But yeah. Yeah. 
it's like when the divine feminine or the feminine energies in this situation took their power back is when someone really got the message. And I don't just mean like took their power back in like an egotistical, well, screw you, I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be happy without you, blah, blah, blah. It's not even about that. It's about someone finally was like, wow, okay, well, that's you're going on, that's going on for you. That doesn't work for me, Queen of Swords. That doesn't work for me. That is not something that I want in my life. So I'm just gonna have to move on and go in a different direction. But I wish you well. I hope you get everything you want. I hope you 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 know you're you're happy and that you find love and that's and all that. But this energy just is not for me. It just isn't. Which then pushed this other person into the King of Swords energy. In the sense of, well, shit, she's walking away from me. What do I do now? And so, there. And it's funny because I'm in. I'm having a little bit of an internal battle right now in saying that because it's like, well, these energies. We'll say if it's the masculine energy here that's been pushed into this King of Swords situation. Many of them have been in the King of Swords energy to begin with. But now that King of Swords energy is being turned into a different direction, a different focus. It's like the King of Swords is watching the Queen of Swords walk away and is like, oh, oh shit, what do I do now? What do I do about this? When the Queen of Swords takes her power back and uses it wisely, uses it to her own benefit without trying to hurt someone in the process, that's when the King of Swords really does become empowered to look at the situation as objectively as possible and ultimately have this tower moment and have something come to completion with the world. Really face the final judgment that is face the, the judgment that is influenced by the empress or the divine feminine energies the rise of the divine feminine because that's what's happening right now to see the devil for what he's actually worth queen of pentacles wifey material Motherly material, mother, the mother. <laughs> I just, for some, for some, I really feel like there's been some sort of toxic relationship with a mother um, or feminine energies as someone grew up. Um, something or just some, some, someone was taught some sort of behavior. In in a sense, it almost devalues feminine energies or women, and so. It's like this person had some sort of, uh, golden ticket towards narcissistic abuse in some way. That's for a select few of you. That's not everyone. For others of you, there, there is just a, a pretty, like a codependent energy when it comes to a motherly figure. But what, uh, some sort of situation that's pretty toxic and imbalanced with reciprocity even. And then underneath the deck here, you have the star. So healing, which is leading to ultimate wish fulfillment. Destiny is what I'm getting also. Some sort of destiny. But someone was pushed, was really pushed into a scenario where they were kind of having to face their shadow. And that is really kind of just par for the course. That's just the energies around us right now. It's very much a situation which you, in which you just cannot hide from yourself any longer. The universe won't allow it. Okay. So let's get into some oracle guidance here.
I'm going to start with the Animal Spirit Guides. Alright. Best message, please, Spirit. Thank you so much. Monday, December 3rd. There we go. What is that? Cobra? Cobra and Turtle. Now, Turtle did come out in reverse here. Okay. So we'll start with Cobra. Pausing, waiting, the inner teacher. The cobra represents a teacher or spiritual guardian. The cobra hovers and watches, ever present, ever protecting, ever loving. The essence of the cobra is found deep within us in the form of the inner teacher and manifests externally in those special guides who led us along our path. What would it feel like to be a student again? What are you ready to learn? Remember the old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When in balance, uh, Cobra is a student of life, is humble and wise. When out of balance, Cobra is a know-it-all or egocentric. To bring into balance, one must take a class or study. Okay. And then next we have Turtle. And Turtle did come out in the reverse here. So let's see. Let's see here. Here we go. Turtle. Ancient soul, grounded, trusting, at home in the self. It is wonderful to be in the presence of a turtle personality. Like the beaver, the turtle has a strong relationship with the earth and water elements simultaneously. This helps to ground and connect them to the deeper truths of life, no matter where their travels lead them. Turtle energy is behind all great writers and storytellers as they collect life experiences under their shells for later use. The most potent turtle energy helps us close all the other books and begin to tell our own true tale. When in balance, Turtle is peaceful, adventurous, and productive. When out of balance, Turtle slows down to a, to a halt. To bring into balance, one must go on an adventure. What I'm really getting, especially with Turtle coming out in the reverse, I really feel like it, it came out in the reverse because there are some people out there that are really starting to work on getting comfortable in their own shells, in their own bodies, comfortable with them own, in their own selves, okay? <clears throat> you're like really learning about yourselves right now, especially with the shadow work that's going on. And it's like you're seeing, your, you're working on seeing yourselves in a completely different way. Okay, please excuse the pause. I was just taking everything in. I do, I'll say this. I was looking at the King of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles and just thinking about how they are very similar energies. I mean, I do see the Queen of Pentacles as very similar to that, to the energy of the King of, of I'm sorry, of the Queen of Swords. They're both very stern, very decisive. Neither of them are going to take any shit, but the Queen of Swords is very much detached whereas the Queen of Pentacles is not. And so I was looking at the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Swords and I'm thinking, that is actually a pretty good balance right there. It's an interesting balance. The King of Swords has enough detachment for the both of them and the Queen of Pentacles has enough um, compassion <laughs> for the both of them. It's interesting. They balance each, each other out pretty well. And it's almost as if they're learning from each other. I don't even know. I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm just, <laughs> just letting the energies flow. And that's what they're saying. It's like, that's how I'm seeing it. It's like this, but this is an internal thing. 
between the King of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles. This is like the inner masculine and feminine within. Even though we were talking about in this section, we were talking about some sort of mother figure. It is now, it's really helping influence someone internally come to terms and come into a balanced state within themselves. All right, let's get the final closing message here from the Crystal Mandala Oracle. Alright guys, let's see your closing message, please, Spirit. Or it's just Monday, December 3rd. There we go. Rest. And the inner queen. Okay. We Yeah, and then underneath the deck you have relief and repair. Alright, so it's definitely an energy of needing to rest here. Um... <laughs> Let's start with rest. Card number two, Archangel Remio and Aragonite. We bring you the gift of rest. Rest. We ask you to reflect on what you truly need. Do you need a break for an hour or so now to relax and recharge? Or do you need to change your lifestyle to more regularly include rest so you can sustain your vitality, sense of well-being, and creative energy? Do you need rest that is active, that helps you switch off your mind and come out of your head into your body? Do you need rest that is physically still to deeply replenish your energy reserves at a deeper cellular level? Do you need mental rest to let go of worry and stress, or emotional rest to let you off an emotional roller coaster and into some simple acceptance of happiness for a time? Rest can happen in different ways and on different levels. We bring you the gift of all types of rest and ask that you choose that which will feel best for you at this time. Okay, so there's definitely a need to heal and repair here. <laughs> And that, I mean, that falls right in line. I mean, even if someone does want to come forward, they know that they couldn't right now. I mean, yes, they have come out of this worst case scenario, the fears and anxieties, losing sleep over it, nine of swords in reverse. But, and, and they, they're ready to start making some sort of move, but there is still some healing that needs to be done because they can only approach the situation in in so many ways, they still have to align with it. They still have to be that vibrational match before they can even think about having some sort of successful reconciliation. And they're aware of this. On some level, they're aware of this. So, this, so rest is definitely needed. And then we have Goddess Persephone and Ruby. The inner queen. We bring you the empowerment of the inner queen. The inner queen exercises authority through, through divine feminine wisdom. Her empowerment is active within men and women that consciously seek to honor feeling, instinct, and intuition, and choose to live their lives according to a moral code of compassion. When the inner queen stirs within, judgment is replaced with empathy for your own suffering and that of others. You can understand that human beings cannot re resolve their suffering I'm sorry, you can understand that human beings who cannot resolve their suffering will unconsciously act out their pain in the world. They are unconsciously expressing their inner story within, with their outer actions, the story of their inner pain. The healing power of the inner queen brings inner pain to the consciousness, to consciousness where it can finally be released and the soul freed. This can happen because of her compassion. She does not approach life with a fearful or judging nature, so she can move freely through all realms. Witness great pain and darkness and remain centered in her heart, shining a gentle light of intention for the liberation from suffering for all beings. She reminds us of our innate div divine dignity and the healing power of our compassion. So like I was saying, this is all mainly being influenced by the rise of the divine feminine within all of us. That has nothing to do, it really is not, 
you know, specific to Twin Flames or whatever. That's that's for everybody. Everyone. Everyone goes through this transition and any everyone has the opportunity to benefit from it, depending on how you approach it, okay? All right. So there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I hope you all have a great day, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Yeah? Take care. <laughs> Bye.